The next speaker is Tomislav Mikulic, or just Tom. Uh, his friends are calling him just Tom, like me. He was born in Croatia, but resides in Australia, so, so he's one of our guests that has a very long trip to come here. Um, he lives there since 1990. He is an educated electronic engineer and also a pioneer of art and is also an artist from the very beginning. He worked in the Yugoslavian broadcasting station, which was part of the mighty uh, European Broadcasting Union, EBU, at that time. And uh, for, for a young generation, I have to mention that this was a time where private television was not existing in Central Europe. Tom, and that's almost not worthwhile to mention, was fascinated by moving images and began to experiment already in the early 1970s. And keep in mind, it was in Yugoslavia, which is much more complicated, even more complicated than it was in the Western world like America or Europe. So my dear friend, it's a special honor to have you here and please come up and yeah, I have to put on our clock, as you know, and I'm downstairs. That's great. <laughs> Welcome, the mic is yours. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne, for so comprehensive introduction, so I don't have to waste my precious time on that. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for this brilliant opportunity to meet so many colleagues, friends, and making new acquaintances. Let me uh, uh, tell you what will I show you today. Uh, it's about one very unusual algorithm. Uh, algorithm is based on morphing, but uh, I haven't seen uh, that algorithm applied in 3D space. Let's see. Yeah, uh, I prepared uh, three segments. Uh, first segment will be a compilation of animation which we are aware of. And I just uh, selected a randomly animation which uh, uh, we know for some reason, like first in uh, something. And the next uh, segment will be a quick run-through compilation of still drawings which uh, show so obviously that uh, they should have been animated. Yeah, I didn't mention that very soon after I started doing plotter drawings in uh, 1970, 1971, uh, I, uh, I immediately realized that these drawings need a camera. I wanted these drawings animated. I wanted them to move. So the last segment will be showing you the algorithm which I never had opportunity to explain before. So let's see. Uh, quick uh, compilation of moving images. Of course, um, guys who had opportunity to have access to technology, to camera, to film, uh, they, they left the iconic things like John Whitney. I just want to remind you about John Whitney. He actually did animation on each of frames of his animation, like lapis and mantra. So he started... Uh, uh, doing animation on each frame, so we had a sequence of his frames as animation of animated frames. Uh, one of the, uh, I believe, not one of the first, but first animation done at uh, uh, Labs, uh, Bell Labs at New Jersey, as we have seen Michael Knoll's presentation, was by Edward Zayak. And uh, uh, that lab, <coughs> actually uh, left uh, very, very interesting and beautiful uh, film animations. So we've seen this, that's stereoscopic, and uh, Kenneth Knowlton, Ken developed B-Flex program, and interesting part is that this was a rare scientific place which invited artists to use technology to, to create artwork like Lillian Schwartz, uh, Stan Van Der Beek, and many others. Of course, Chuck, my dear friend Charles Churi, uh, was one of the earliest 
uh, uh, artist who uh, had background in art, not in science, and his animation is uh, legendary today. Uh, this is a sequence from a collection in MoMA. Manfred Mohr, also a pioneer, uh, he had multidimensional cubes, and uh, that's uh, one from 1974. I met him in 1975 in Paris studio. He lives in New York today. And uh, he showed me his drawings only. I, I have never seen the animation. Well, this is uh, Hunger by Peter Foldish. That's uh, uh, animation based on uh, plotter drawings. And this film was actually nominated for Academy Award Oscar. And it, it won many other awards, but uh, missed that one. This was an early animation by me. Uh, so this is just linear morphing between keyframes. And um, I found very interesting uh, animation by Larry Cuba, who I believe is uh, here. And um, uh, he actually uh, participated in uh, so many things, uh, uh, Hollywood production, feature films. And uh, I read that uh, he uh, wrote software uh, helping uh, John Whitney. So that's, that's a great thing. And this is the one I just uh, wanted to show. This is the first ever time that motion capture was used. And motion capture by Rob Abel uh, was uh, uh, technology that they developed for this commercial. Now, uh, I want to go quickly through compilation of still drawings. So, we know William Fetter's Boeing Man, or First Man, he called it. Boeing uh, calls it Boeing Man. He worked for Boeing and the calculations of motion of the pilot in the cabin. He um, drew this uh, uh, drawings on the plotter, and this is example of drawing that really needs to be animated. Same like we know oscillograms by Herbert Franke. So these oscillograms are still images. Now imagine if he had technology to animate them to have dynamic forms on the screen. Same thing with his electronic Einstein. So changing the colors and shapes would be a magnificent animation. Now, um, my friend Frieder, uh, very dear, dear, dear person, I had the privilege to enjoy his humorous comments uh, since long ago. And uh, there was one joke that he said, but no one, no one understood. In 1967, he said, uh, this is the end of computer graphics. Everything in computer graphics has been done. There's nothing more we can expect. And people didn't realize that was a joke. Uh, so, <laughs> right, Frieder? <laughs> uh, so all these matrices, imagine them uh, moving and animated. Not to mention the drawings by Chuck, uh, Charles Suri. So, uh, just to remind you, the, the uh, well-known proportions of the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci were drawn in a square and circle. So, the idea was that uh, uh, Chuck uh, applied deformation on the circle to, to deform it into a square to see what happens with the rest of the image. Imagine that animated, same like all the deformations that he applied to his drawings. Leslie Meze in Toronto, he was drawing uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, not only plotter drawings, but screen drawings, which this, this modulated images he never animated. So I showed him from the keyframes what he did. So I sent him the animation, and he was delighted. <laughs> and. Uh, and there are drawings, plotter drawings, like uh, Georg Nies from 68. You can see that dynamic, that, that motion. Uh, images like this are screaming to be animated. 
There's a Sylvia Robot um, graphics. So Sylvia is somewhere here. And uh, I just watch, watch the dynamic and motion in these still images, uh, serigraphs, and regret they were not animated. And um, Jean-Francois Colonna in Paris, he did great structures, never animated. And of course, we know Vera Molnar, uh, and uh, her graphics are, are, are uh, so obvious uh, drawings to be animated, like these structures of quadrilaterals and lines, and color and emotions, uh, and uh, uh, similar artwork by a nice couple, Hervé Utrecht and Monique Nahas from Paris. So they used bitmaps, not plotter drawings, which should have been animated. Uh, in the uh, early 70s, this is one of my first drawings. I, I have put it here, not only because it was shown uh, on at exhibition at Tendencies 5, but it's so obvious why I wanted to, to do animation, not just still images. So this is an example. This is the poster uh, for my uh, first solo exhibition in 1976. So the linear um, morphing from two keyframes, like text to slika, which means picture. I remade this recently just to show that this animation would be on display as a poster today. We didn't have this technology, of course, then. Now. Uh, I came to the last segment. No, no, don't know uh, how much time is left. So, oh, I see. A few minutes. That will be enough. Uh, I had developed an algorithm which uh, uh, consisted of uh, plotter drawings, which were exhibited at exhibitions, but uh, they were hanged on the, on the wall, and it's like a chart. You don't see what, what they represent. It's just a, a visual uh, one still image. So it's because uh, the animation, uh, the morphing that I'm talking about, what I developed, is in the space. It's like in the room. If we have four corners on the uh, floor, four corners on the ceiling, and uh, I morphed elements from any point on the walls, floor, and ceiling, the entire space would be filled with these elements. Now, how to explain that I'm talking about morphing in the space, not, not on the plane? Uh, so uh, I decided that's too uh, difficult to me to, to explain it. So I decided to ask for help uh, to, to, to get someone much smarter than me to explain you. And I uh, tried using AI, and I prompted like space, uh, uh, the elements uh, on the wavy uh, uh, floor with uh, morphing. But uh, whatever I fed into that uh, AI generator, I decided now I, I had to, to uh, explain myself. It, it seems that uh, AI still not. Uh, 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 ready uh, uh, to, to uh, replace artists. Uh, so the basic thing is I started with a grid. That grid I modulated by random numbers, which you can see uh, are modulated by space and amplitude. So I took one, let's say the middle one, this is the fifth uh, uh, level, I took the third one, to distribute elements. So my elements are morphed from one corner to the center, from center to other corners. So what elements did I use? I used uh, something that's based on triangle. So each of these elements is actually a triangle, uh, which changes its shape, because that triangle that I used uh, was made of uh, rubber lines. So you just imagine picking the points of the triangle and pulling them inside and even outside the triangle, that defined what elements I can use. Now, no wonder that I wanted triangle. If I used complex elements, uh, it, it would uh, take so much more calculation time in those times, like uh, 
three points is uh, so much easier on computing than, let's say, 50 point circle. So these are some examples uh, that uh, triangle morphed into, you, you can see the, in the name of the file, I added uh, much later, not, not at the original time, and that the morphing goes from zero, which means there is nothing, nothing morphed, it's triangle. So triangle to uh, halfway through to circle, full way through to the circle, or all the way through to the uh, middle point. And uh, uh, in these corners on the left side, you can see when the rubber line was stretched outside the, the triangle. So I actually found that uh, uh, one of the cross sections, because each of these drawings uh, I considered as a cross section from the space. So when you stack them one above another, you should see the morphing in space, which doesn't go from corner to corner of the same, on the same wall, but any point on any side of the room uh, morphed to any element on any other si uh, side of the room is morphing. And uh, I choose one where the morphing uh, is actually uh, not obvious because uh, I'm morphing element with the same parameters, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And this is just what happens that uh, uh, I selected simply visually as attractive enough to fill the form. Th this was drawn uh, by Plotter on a translucent paper, and I filled the paint manually so I can print it in silk screen and get Plotter drawing in color. So uh, I, uh, neither I nor AI uh, were good in explaining how morphing in 3D works, but I hope uh, when, when you see images, you will remember they are cross sections, they are sli slices. So uh, I never had opportunity to uh, explain my 3D morphing before because uh, these drawings were always hanging on the wall. And uh, if you see the graphic on the wall and you don't know explanation, it's just uh, too, simple, too simple visual uh, artifact. So thank you very much for listening to my algorithm of morphing in 3D.